Let's start with the bad news. If you have a mental illness, you will fail. You will fall short of your own expectations, the expectations of others. It's a fact of life. But a fail is not the end unless you let it be. And you can only let it be a complete and total failure if you don't stand up and try again. We're going to talk about that on STP today. Welcome to Shattered the Podcast. Sharing the lived experience of mental illness on a father, a mother, a family. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Failure or a sense of failure or this overwhelming feeling that you are going to fail is something that I have lived with with my mental illness right from the word go. I felt like I was failing everybody. I was failing my wife, my kid, my workmates, my parents, my brothers, my sisters, but I was also failing myself. Every dream that I had for myself, every thought of hope, of achievement, of career, of ability was gone because I couldn't operate at the same capacity that I could before. And in fact, at times it felt like I had no capacity to do anything. This is the problem with failure. Once you fail, you're demoralized. You don't want to go on. Unless, unless you have that quiet voice in the bottom of you that just says, it's okay, this was bad but it's not the end. I fail all the time. I feel like a couple of weeks ago, I failed a kid in a class. Uh, The more I analyze the situation about this kid, he got really mad at me, threatened me, swore at me. Um, What initiated that is the teacher had asked him to put some stuff away. And I just thought I'd reinforce that. Like, yeah, mate, we do need you to put it away. Um, I don't know what was going on in the kid's life, but he lost it and he lost it bad. The teacher had to escort him out the room. And to be honest, I wanted to run out of the room as well. Um, I didn't want to be there anymore. I didn't want to stand in front of a group of people and have to pretend that I was okay. Now, if that was the end of the story, you could consider that to be a fail. If I had have reacted emotionally, emotively, um, in anger, in frustration, and then just left, then that could have been the end of not just that day, but any day working with that organization. If, if say, I had have lost my temper, and said what I wanted to say, (laughs) then that is a failure. But what I did in that instance is through grit, through determination, through heavenly providence, I don't know, but I was able to push through that situation and keep going. And my keep going wasn't pretty. Um, my coworker that I was with asked if they'd like them to speak first. But inside I was like, no, I need to get my mind off this situation. I need to get mindful and believe me, <laughs> there's no more mindful exercise in the world than facing a group full of students that you know their attention is hanging by a thread any moment. <laughs> any any action, any any uh, kind of distraction is going to take these kids away from your message on that day. And my getting up was hard. My not allowing the fail to be the end of the story. And if you listened to last week's podcast, you know um, how I was able to react and. Again, I do not credit myself. I'm not saying that, hey, I had it all together and I'm brilliant and I'm fantastic. No, no, 
No, not at all. I, I attribute 90% of my mental health, and I'm talking my health, not my mental illness, to the fact that my wife believes in me. She believes that I am not a waste. She believes that I have potential. And maybe I believe that a little bit now too, because she believed it. Now, she is my motivator. I don't know what your motivator is. I don't know what it is that you look to in the dark times. But whatever it is, you can use it to help you to keep going. A fail is only a fail if you quit. There's something powerful in that thought, that idea that I might stumble, I might lose my temper, I might have in my mind a goal today, I'm going to go and get a haircut. I walked out of the house, I was walking to the bus stop, I couldn't hack it anymore, I raced back home because it was overwhelming. Now, is that a failure? No, because you actually got out of the house. Now, you might say, I didn't even get to the front door, but did you get out of bed? I mean, sometimes that's the hardest thing to do, just getting out of bed. Why? What, what, what do I possibly have to get out of bed for? What, what is it in my life that is more or bigger in my mind than my mental illness? What reason do I have to get out of bed? There's no point. I'm just going to end up back here. Well, the fact that maybe you got out of bed, maybe the fact that you brushed your teeth, maybe the fact that you did your shopping, maybe the fact that you actually went to work today, maybe you only lasted an hour or two and had to run out of there almost screaming. But you made it far enough to be able to recognize that you you did more than you wanted to. And that is success. Failure is quitting. Failure is saying that's enough. Now, obviously, (laughs) somebody that attempts to take their own life and succeeds There is no regret there. We don't know. We can't guarantee what's on the other side. We can't guarantee that you'll spend the rest of eternity not thinking, wow, why didn't I just wait another day? But I can tell you, as somebody that has survived suicide, I regret the fact that I tried simply because it was giving up. I'd gotten to a point where I felt like there was no more for me, that I was just damaging the people around me. And that I don't see as a success because I did quit. I kind of joke that I'm bad at killing myself, but there's only a few people that would laugh at that, um, me included. And the fact that I'm glad that I'm bad at killing myself. Let's be honest. Things are going to be hard. Things are going to be tough. You are going to fail. You're going to fall short. You're going to not meet your own expectations. But that's okay. Because you you didn't quit. You kept going. And you might be thinking, Mark, I'm not like you. I don't, I don't do the things that you do. No, of course you don't. I look at other people that I tell stories with that are living their best life through their mental illness and they're succeeding beyond all imagination. And I want to look at them and go, what the hell am I doing with my life, my pathetic little life? I can't afford to think like that. I can't afford to allow that kind of fear, that kind of thinking to take root because it does. It makes you want to quit. 
and I almost did a couple of months ago, quit working at the volunteer organization that I work at and I go into schools and speak in schools, even though I love it because it was just getting too hard. I, I wasn't feeling supported. I wasn't, um, you know, whether it was real or imagined, I just felt like nobody cared about what I was doing. And I was like, well, I'll just stop. And that thought, when the hard times come, it's like I think back on that thought process and go, no, that is that is just quitting. That's just giving up. And I'm not that kind of person. I don't, well, I, maybe I am that kind of person, but I don't want to be that kind of person. I am probably very much like you. I don't listen to other people talk about stuff expecting to be inspired. <laughs> I just don't. But I just want to tell you that even though you may have done something five times, ten times, fifty times, and you've fallen short, you don't fail until you quit. If you are at the peak of your ability, if you're doing the absolute best that you can and you still fail, it's not a failure because you may have, may not have made it this far last time, but maybe you'll make it a little bit further the next time. So I almost got there, but I didn't make it. That's not a failure because that time where you say, I almost got there, you should be looking at, look how far I did go. It's that changing your perspective to understand that the goal is not the win. It's the journey to get there and how you perceive that and how you are able to achieve better this time that's important. And if you can step out of yourself for a moment and just go, you know what, I might not be able to do X, Y, or Z, but I can do X. Maybe, maybe in a year's time I can do X and Y. I may never be able to do Z, but I haven't failed until I just decide that X is too far. Now, let's talk about reality versus expectation. Goals have to be real. You can't say to yourself, uh, I am going to, say, uh, write a novel in three months. It's never going to happen unless you're already writing two, three thousand pages, two, three thousand words a day. It's not going to happen. But if you say, I want to write my story down, and it might only be three pages long. The first day, get halfway through and, oh, I can't do it. Next day, you get another half page done. You haven't failed. You've succeeded. Yeah, success is different from what you expected. But once you set those realistic goals, I am going to go and do my grocery shopping and I'm not going to get angry today. Not going to get angry at drivers, not going to get angry at inconsiderate people. I'm going to stay in check and I'm just going to do this activity peacefully without any emotional, mental illness road bumps. You might get home, you might only have half your groceries, but I want you to not think about what you didn't get. I want you to think about what you did get. It's important. And that change of focus on what I didn't achieve to what I did achieve is amazing. You know, I was talking to a guy that wanted to run a 10K, um, hoping to do it in under an hour. It took him two hours, 10 minutes. You could not take the smile off that guy's face because he made the entire distance. Sure, he didn't run the whole way. Sure, he didn't do it in the time that he was hoping to, but he did it. And he was so proud of himself. And I just had to be with him in congratulating him because you could see that he was so 
pleased with the effort that he'd put in. And I thought, well, man, what if you could do that with everything? What if you could, what if you could do that with your relationship with your kids? I have a terrible relationship with my kids. I'm a horrible father. Maybe I took time out and I made them smile or I gave them a lift somewhere. Sure, I might have been a distant and it might have been a little thing, but it's something. You only fail when you go, it's too late. There's nothing more I can do. Everything's bummed. I'm out. That's what failure is. The journey is never a failure. I think I spoke about this last week. If you've ever climbed a mountain, I know when I was in, um, when I was young, I went mountain climbing in Victoria in a place called Mount Arapiles. It's some of the best climbing in Australia. And I know that even though I was scared of heights, because that's why I was doing mountain climbing, I knew that once I got about halfway up, it was always a joy to look down at where you came from. Like, look how far I've made it. Every time you climb a mountain, you look at that person that's enjoying it. That's the person that doesn't have their eyes on their feet and they're going, one, two, one, two. It's the person that stops and looks around and goes, oh man, we're only halfway up, but look at the view already. This is amazing. They're seeing the beauty in what they've already done. Have they succeeded yet? They don't care. <laughs> they're, just, they're just in the journey. They're like, you know what, man, if we could stop now. And this has still been an amazing walk. Um, an example of this is um, we were given a trip to Hawaii and my wife decided she wanted to climb this mountain in Oahu. Um, this peak in Honolulu, and um, is the, this crater, and she went and did the walk. Now, I wanted to go on the walk. I wanted to see the view, but for some reason, I just didn't go. I think I just went down to the beach, and I don't know what I did, but I didn't go on that walk. Now. Physically, I probably could have been able to do the walk, but I didn't even try. And now I look back on that and I think, why, why didn't I try? And I do, I regret that I didn't do the climb because she came back down. She told me about the amazing views, talked about all these fortifications that she saw in the mountain, these concrete pillboxes and stuff, stuff that I love to look at. And I had that regret, like, oh, why didn't I even try? If we can change our perspective and stop looking at that end goal as being the be all and end all and can start looking at the journey as being what's important, it'll change your life. I know it's changed mine. Hey, uh, I want to thank you for listening to Shattered, the podcast today. I appreciate it. Um, Hit the like, subscribe, or share button, whatever button's good for you. Uh, Subscribe. We'd love to have you join the conversation. I want to thank um, uh, my colleagues at MEACT this week for their support as well. Um, Just It's rare to work with an organization where you feel like your colleagues have really got your back. And I felt that this week. All righty. Have a great week. I'll speak to you soon. Bye for now. Thank you for listening to Shattered, the podcast. I'd like to thank our producer, Meredith Brosnan, our executive producer, Torian Lau, and the band Adelaide for allowing us to use their song as our theme. Go to shatteredthepodcast.com for more information.